On behalf of JGBS and Jindal Global University, I welcome you all uh, from Kelly School of Business, Indiana University, um, to our very humble abode. I hope you're having a good time here in, in India, in Sonipat. I know uh, my two um, friends from last year have been here before. First time. Um, no, this is my first time. <laughs> The first time to India for many of you as well. I hope you're having a great time. My name is Professor Lucknath Jaisi. I'm a uh, so I'm an associate professor in marketing here at Jindal Global Business School. I'm vice dean of research. I oversee research activities in the school. We are waiting on our dean, who is, as you can imagine, incredibly held up. He's got a number of meetings. He'll be with us in a couple of minutes. So what I thought we'd do to start off with, we'll basically introduce the um, sort of panel here, and then we, what I thought we'll do is we'll throw it open to a discussion if we have time about some of your insights about India and what you've seen around. You're all from Kelly, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, various business disciplines, I take it. Yes, um, about your insights around economic growth, marketing. Uh, behavior, consumers, consumption, brand, whatever it might be here in India. Okay, so how about I uh, throw it over to Alexander and then uh, we can have a more formal discussion, or sorry, informal discussion uh, with the students. So what, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> so basically, um, talk to us. There's only a few of us from no. our school here. But talk to us a bit about uh, Kelly. Sure. Um, Absolutely. You know where, yeah. where you know Kelly and where you sit, and uh, yeah. uh, I, I do believe we have strong links with Absolutely. you as well, and yeah. um, so on. Yeah. So so uh, as you might know, uh, the Kelly School. You look familiar. Um, the Kelly, the Kelly School is, uh, um, I think you probably can definitely say, is one of the highest uh, ranking schools in the, in the US. Um, we have a population now of about uh, 5,000 plus students. 9,000. 9,000, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's just by half. Um, including graduates. Including graduates, that's true, yeah. Including, uh, so it's now about 9,000 students. So um, um, we, and, uh, we have a variety of different Sorry. majors, a variety of different you know, expertise. Uh, I think our biggest major right now is uh, finance. Yeah. You are the expert on that one, right? Uh, finance, um, uh, but we have a strong presence uh, in, in fields like management, entrepreneurship, um, uh, technology as well, supply chain, business analytics, uh, this is something that we all uh, do very much. Uh, Kelly is very big in international programs. So this is something that uh, we really take a lot of pride uh, and this is Andrew's department there, um, make sure that everything goes uh, goes well. I think we have right now uh, 19 uh, different trips that take place in the... 20, we got 20, okay. <laughs> we have 20 different trips that takes place in the sophomore uh, year, and I hope that several of you, or all of you, might be taking one of those trips next year. Uh, for those not familiar, so this is actually a group of uh, students between the freshmen and the sophomore years, so they're going to start the school in the second second year. Um, so many of them uh, already know what they are going to be doing, they must have expertise, so several of you have already majors. Uh, some of you might be still considering your specialization. Um, and uh, we take a lot of pride of this trip. This is the oldest trip, I believe, that we have. Uh, I think we have been doing India, coming to India for like 15 years. 14, 15 years, um, so it's a very traditional for us. Uh, we started uh, many years ago in a kind of, uh, let's see what happens, and let's see <laughs> bunch of people around and uh, figure out uh, as we go. Uh, but obviously now we're in a situation that's much more structured, much more uh, organized, um, and uh, it's great, a great opportunity to visit partners here, like the EU. Um, uh, we're very, uh, um, amazed by the success of our partners. Um, this is really contributes a lot to the internationalization of the Kelly School. It is something that we really take a lot of pride uh, of our relationships. 
and making sure that you know our, our partners and us are uh, extremely successful together. Um, so I think maybe we can uh, pass to the students to yep. All right. talk a little bit about the sharing impressions about uh, India so far and uh, what we have seen. I mean, so before coming, they have eight weeks of classes uh, about India, uh, preparing them to, to visit. So one of the things that uh, we discussed a little bit, actually in the bus today, was the thing that they have uh, surprised them, or the thing that they kind of confirmed expectations. So why don't you we pass to? Come out here, good stuff. Yeah. So who would like to volunteer? Do the first. I can probably vote someone. <laughs> Might be easier to sorry to pick on those people. Start from people, the people on the ends of the aisles. Yes, so. hmm. All right. Thank you. Not working, so it might be well. <laughs> um, I guess one of the cool things I found out initially was uh, the placement exams um, for high school students. Um, they have like a few, four or five that they take. Um, that kind of goes with like the admissions process. I uh, kind of found it cool that two of the exams that students can and a lot of them take are the finance and commerce ones. Um, that's not something that I would really heard about a lot in like America, obviously. And um, there's been like a lot of lack of like personal finance stuff, even like America, just students learning about that. So I kind of thought that was really cool that that's something that's really being enforced um, in India, taking the finance and commerce early on in like high school. Good. One, we'll probably take one more. Sorry, it, it seems like a fascinating exercise. One more before we introduce our thing. Um, kind of going off that, we kind of learned about how like important the nationalized test scores are for getting into colleges and universities. Like in the U.S., we have a similar system with SAT or ACT, but um, there's a lot of other factors that are weighed in at the high school GPA and extracurriculars. Where uh, in India, it seems like the national test scores is weighed a lot more. So. Um, Okay, uh, thank you for that. Um, I'll introduce our Dean, Professor Rajesh Chakrabarti, and he'll uh, speak a few words to you about the school and the university and the school and the partnership. Also, with the, as well. the rest of the gang, I think Rajesh is here, Hello, everyone. Yeah, Vice Dean uh, Academic Affairs. Raju, you have already met, I'm presuming, Bhuvaneshwari and uh, Ukma. Uh, so, a very warm welcome to all of you. I hope it wasn't too much of a trek to come down from the, from the city to Sonipat. When did you start from the hotel? We, we left, uh, actually we stopped to eat something. So uh, what, we what? closed the hotel, so actually it was not bad at all. It was after about two hours. Yeah, about two hours. About two hours, yeah. About two hours. About two hours. yeah. yeah. That's so for how many of you is this the first visit to India? All right. <laughs> I hope you're liking it so far. How long have you been in uh, the country now? Since day five. Oh, day five. Okay. This is the city. We've been in the country, but we've been traveling last year for five years. Outside of the US for five years. Have you already visited the Taj? Yes. Okay. That's, uh, that's a must do <laughs> when you're in here. I hope you liked it. So it's uh, great. We are looking forward to a, a relatively unstructured conversation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the, you. Have, you've had a round of introduction from for the, for the. So why don't we have some of my colleagues at, the, at both ends? So I'll, why don't we do a very quick round of introduction and uh, then we can have. A Supply chain and uh, my 
Great. So if we can do a little bit of a round of introduction, I know there's, there's a bigger crowd here, but uh, uh, but what programs are you from at Kelly? Is it the MBA program or the undergraduate. MBA? undergraduate program? Excellent, excellent. And, uh, and this trip is going to be how long? Ten days total, about eight days here. Eight days in uh, the... In eight days in India, and what other country are you visiting? Oh, uh, that's just our travel. That's our travel. Yeah, ten days total. <laughs> okay. Lovely. So you'll be based uh, mostly in the NCR area, Delhi, or you'll travel to Mumbai or Bangalore? What is uh, the Pune and Mumbai? Pune and Mumbai. Excellent. That's beautiful, too, particularly in the rains. <laughs> right now, Bombay is uh, Mumbai is half submerged. I'm hoping that by the time you reach there, the water may. I don't know. It's a long monsoon that Mumbai gets far longer than what we have up here. And uh, it's a very long and heavy rain period. Right now, we are having, uh, having a lot of fun in the water. <laughs> 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 we'll see how it, <laughs> how it changes by the time you get there. So uh, maybe I'll just ask all of you, and I know Lakhna had already started the interaction. Thank you. Uh, how would you want to, and I think the best way to do this is probably just open it up for whatever questions you have. I know we normally give a lot of talk about India and school and all that. I'm happy to do that. But we would love to know what you would want to know rather than me telling you what we would like you to know. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a different thing. So whatever comes to your mind. Can we do a Q&A kind of a thing? Why don't we do that? And I'm not promising that, certainly not me, but even the exact team here will be able to answer all these questions. <laughs> but it'll still be good to know the questions. And we will do our best in terms of answering them. And then we will ask the questions from our side, I guess. And you can try to answer those. <laughs> we can do that. Yeah, sure. Yes. Your name? Yes. My name is Andrea Peterson, and um, my question is, do you have such a rigorous program to get into university here? Is there other ways that if you don't meet the deadline or the, the cut that you can get in a different way with the petitioning? Sure. I think the different uh, schools, in, in, in India, we obviously have a very strong public university system, a large public university system and then there's a private university system here. Uh, with several new private universities now coming up, which is a relatively, uh, I would say, what, a decade old decade, phenomenon, yes, decade maybe slightly longer, a decade, a decade and a half. Before that, also there were certain private institutions, but universities coming up is, a, is a, about a 15 year, 10 to 15 year old story. We ourselves are only 10 years old here at uh, Jindal. Now, this question about getting in, you know, India is a country of large numbers, mm -hmm. <laughs> large population, large applicant pool. So the, and there, is a, there is a need for maintaining very clear standards and fairness. And uh, uh, so when it comes to the uh, public universities, I think it is almost completely driven by the scores and numbers because they have to follow very clear uh, objective methods of of, uh, uh, of admission. We do the same, but we, I think, have a bit of a leeway in looking at 
sort of a 360 degree view, a little bit of the non-academic aspects as well. But uh, we don't have any sort of reserved seats or anything where people can petition that to be given away. I mean, it has to go through the formal admission procedure. But the procedure itself uh, combines the, the, the pure score, quantitative scores part of it with qualitative assessment of the candidate. So we certainly make room for leadership qualities. We certainly make room for uh, for any previous achievement that that seems to seems to reflect promise on the part of the student, which may not necessarily be only in terms of grades and scores. Uh, we certainly look at that. I don't know if that answers the question, but we do do a 360 degree view of the applicant. Why don't I turn to, turn to, I think, Anshu and Minakshi and uh, Nivedita, they are probably even better equipped than I am to answer this question. in law schools. Now they are going to pursue the AMD. So that is an um, um, uh, offer that uh, JGU gives. So after having a graduate in PBA, uh, graduation in CA degrees, you can pursue a post-graduation in law. So that's the, that's the allowed. But not all the public university of India is that flexible. So they make it kind of uh, rigid and rigid. So wherever the streams of your graduation is, you are supposed to do post-graduation in that. So this is a, a Indian public university. All those few deaths, yeah. Yeah, I think that's an important uh, distinction that they brought about. So most of the public universities, and for very good reasons, because it's not easy for them to maintain with the numbers and all of that that they run, to have that flexibility. So, uh, most of many of the private universities, ourselves, Ashoka, that is a neighboring in the Spain neighborhood of Sonipat, is another young and uh, well known uh, liberal arts uh, university. Then there is a um, uh, flame near Pune. I don't know whether you'll have a chance to visit them. Or oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, so flame and others. So the difference that these new institutions have brought is brought in far greater amount of flexibility. So for instance, what, it, what should not sound surprising to you people from the US, because the US system obviously is extremely flexible and lets you, uh, lets you connect courses. And you can go do an undeclared major for a couple of years before you figure out what you want to do. That was not traditionally an option in the Indian system. So you sign up for a certain honors or a major, which is the equivalent of 
a major in our system is called honor. And it's a, it's a system that is inherited from the British system, so same, uh, same terminology. So if you have if you have enrolled, like when I did my uh, undergraduate myself, that was when there were still dinosaurs on the planet. So, uh, so when I, I got into an economics honors, means I could only take those particular courses in the economics department. I had to fulfill a certain number. And I had a certain subsidiary subject, mathematics and statistics, where those particular courses were set. Actually, in my case, I remember, I don't think I had any electives at all. Everything was completely set. We just had to take those courses and pass them, and that was it. Now, it's a different matter that we were interested in doing other things, so we therefore went into other classes and audited those courses, wanted to listen to some of the fellow British professors teaching English or something else, and that was, but we would never get credit for that. Now, in the private uh, university world, that flexibility has come in. So people can take artificial intelligence with uh, uh, literature appreciation, with anything, that, that's absolutely fine. There, there is a certain number of credits that one has to earn to get a specialization declared in their uh, certificate. But it's not even like, I don't think it's even mandatory that you have to have a specialization. You can have a degree which says, uh, yeah, the general management, and you get a, a BBA degree, for example, Bachelor in Business Administration, and you don't have any declared field of specialization. That's perfectly fine. Sorry, there was a question here. Which, yes, please. Anybody has the statistics 46. like here on the 40, 45, 46? 46. 46. 46. 46. Yeah, yeah, good, good. You already looked at that. Uh, good, 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 good. I was, I was, I was a bit, the same between 45 and 46, but 46 must be the right answer. <laughs> Thank you. What fields do they study? You know, that's a very interesting question that you ask. And uh, I think we also need to think about this. Uh, uh, this uh, what do they go in in terms of careers, and uh, whether, they whether they study something different? I have a feeling, and that, honest, to be honest with you, it's not like I've looked at the data very clearly, and I cannot back it up off the top of my head with evidence. But I have a feeling that there is no visible gender difference in, uh, at least not in our school, but at this higher education level in career choices uh, between men and women. Now, anybody else here has a differing view? I mean, what, what are your thoughts? I don't think, because our biggest school on campus is the law school. Yeah. Second biggest is the business school. Then we have the um, uh, public policy, government and uh, international policy. Affairs. And I think in terms of the, uh, the, the gender ratio across schools also, we are pretty balanced. It may be that liberal arts has, has a greater proportion of uh, women, but that is, even that is not really very substantially greater. It may be a tad greater than others. But, uh, but law school, business school, these all have that 46% that you mentioned somewhere close in that area. In terms of the placements that we see of our students, there is no particular difference between men and women in terms of both their choices as well as their acceptances in roles. So That is true. Yeah. We find it's easier. Our, our women students have a better performance in the placement side. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think they are slightly more diligent and focused than, than the male students. <laughs> <laughs> that is my, that's my impression. Uh, yeah, let me start there. Hi, um, I was just wondering what kind of marketing you employ to uh, attract more international Great question. I think Bhuvaneshwari, you may try to take a crack at that one because IAGI is quite focused at uh, um, marketing, in, in, hmm? marketing in the marketing in the reach out. We have these several uh, uh, exchanges that we have. I mean, the partnerships, right? 
Yeah, but 145 or something. No, we are having around 200 plus partnerships uh, all over going. the world. And uh, like we are having uh, placed in 55 countries. And we are having all over the world, best schools in the, like uh, all over the world, we are having the tie-ups with the partners. And all the students, like every uh, semester, we are receiving 15 to 20 students uh, to uh, as an exchange student. And whoever coming for an exchange, they will be like extending another semester also after they are lacking the, the geo culture and the presence over here. So they are having a sound knowledge over in all over the other schools also. They can take a inter, in the, uh, in the, uh, sorry other uh, courses also from other uh, schools. So it is like a flexible. So all students are like uh, 15 to 20 students averagely we are receiving for a semester. This time we are uh, first student, uh, three students are coming tomorrow for an exchange and we are classes are resuming from 1st August onwards. So I think uh, it may not be very far off if we say that most of our marketing or outreach is really through the partnership yeah. model. Right. So we get, we send yeah. our students and we it's also great. get yeah. the donors from them. Yeah, both in, inbound and outbound as we as we so. Yeah. Um, what language is our most of the classes? English. English, all of them? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We also teach languages, though, right? We have a, we have a language center and uh, global, language center. global language center. Plus Taiwan language center. We are having uh, like French, German, Spanish, Italian, and uh, uh, Taiwan uh, center. We are the having Mandarin. like uh, the students are involved with their courses. And now I think we are also going to add uh, uh, what do you call it? A sh shorter Mandarin or a, a the easy Mandarin or something like that, right? The Chinese Chinese, Chinese Mandarin, yeah. which is a shorter course because learning language is a big thing, right? Yeah, Especially for our exchange students, we we offer Hindi courses also for them. Ah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's there. <laughs> that is there. But I think they really don't need those courses. They learn Hindi like. They just absorb it uh, <laughs> from the environment, particularly from the... How many of you have seen a Bollywood movie so far? Just a few. Okay, please don't leave India without watching the latest Bollywood movie. That will give you the best education, the most realistic view of what happens <laughs> in the country. <laughs> At least a completely well-rounded view of what India is all about. <laughs> So absolutely recommend and we should put it in there. It's all grow as we grow, we get a whole block of one of the <laughs> movie theaters reserved. Have great fun watch about your Hollywood movie. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, I believe that your enrollment is around 4,500, right? It has crossed 5,000 this 5, year. Yeah. Do you have plans for expanding it or do you have a vision for how large you see the school? Massive, massive. Very great question. So just uh, Last year, so last year meaning sometime in fall 2018, right, there was an initiative by the government of India to identify universities of, they call it the Institutes of Eminence, IOE. Institutes of Eminence. Oh, sorry, excellence. Eminence. Eminence. Institutes of Eminence. So basically, the government of India took a stance that uh, somehow. Uh, like in many other things, we are losing the race to China in terms of number of universities in the top 100 or top 200. We need to do something about it. Let's focus on our best schools and let's see how we can strengthen those schools. So it invited uh, invited uh, applications from all educational institutions, public and private. And uh, they would go through a very rigorous uh, uh, selection process. And the goal was to pick 10 institutions, 20, 20, 10 public and 10 private. That was the stated goal, to be declared as institutions of eminence. In the first round, they did 10, five private and five public. And the second round of 10, the remaining, is, is still in the process. And we are being considered, we are shortlisted in that second Second one, recommended to the government, but the government has not yet finalized that declaration. But the government committee has recommended Jindal uh, Global University as one of those proposed of the five as institutes of eminence. Now, in the in 
the process of applying for that status, we had to put together extremely detailed plans about what we were going to do in the next 10 years. And our planning was going on, obviously, in parallel with or without all of that. But, but I myself was involved in that, little, that planning, and so I got more uh, sort of caught in into this one. So the plans that we have are seriously ambitious. So I think by 2029, uh, if I remember the numbers right, we are targeting a total student body of 17,000 students. So from 5,000 to 17,000 is what we are planning to get to with a faculty student ratio of 1 is to 10 that would mean 1700 uh, faculty so right now the goal is that the 10 year goal is to rise to 17000 students right now there's, there's, a, there's a lot of talk now that will, will that all be in this campus or do we need another campus <laughs> yeah please uh, what are some of the major companies and cities that a lot of your students get placed in? Major companies, we have had most of the big names come here. Amazon has recruited from here. Uh, some of the consulting firms have come to recruit. Uh, I think. Uh, the uh, big ENY. ENY. ENY, uh, Ernst and Young, uh, have come to recruit from here. We have IBM, Deloitte, Deloitte, has, Deloitte has come uh, to recruit from here, and, uh, sorry, ad agencies, ad agencies uh, all, banks, all banks, banks, all major SCFC, banks have come, ICICI, yeah, the ICICI. national banks and as well as international banks have come to recruit, yeah. Um, I know you guys said you have many partnerships with other people, and that's how you get a lot of international students in, but do you guys have any programs so students here can study in other countries? Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, Raju handles most of that. There is a very large number of our students go abroad. The challenge that we face, to be very frank, is more to get students to come here than for our students to go. <laughs> so so we, we, we work on balancing the, uh, the visit so that we get the same number of students or close to equal number of students incoming. But our outbound student activities are huge. We have a very large number. Raju, what is the number yeah. that from the business school we went out? Yeah, we have uh, 40 plus collaborations across the world. Every year we are sending 40 plus students from us. That is just the business school? Yes, sir. Not the university. Business school, 40 yeah. plus students we are sending. And for summer school also, 10 to 15 students every year. And we used to invite some students also. This year, three students are coming from different countries. So that's the, that's the challenge, and right? We are going to invite uh, some <laughs> 10 to 15 students. Uh, they are arriving uh, during the January also for inter immersion program from USC. What extracurricular activities do students partake in here? And is there a big push to be as involved outside of the classroom as there is inside? I'm going to say that, but I'm just seeing if any one of my colleagues would, would like to take this question. Minakshi? Yeah, yeah, please. So uh, we have a lot of societies, uh, which have been developed at the university level, not at the school level. This includes uh, music society, this includes dance society, uh, literary society, the book club, the theater club. You can think of any activity, and there's certainly a class for that. So, <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm telling you, that, uh, I think we as faculty, we probably only know about 25% of the activities that actually happen on the second <laughs> 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 uh, Yes, uh, it's about. Uh, before that, so I think we have some, we have two internships that are provided. So, at the end of the first year, in the first summer, the students do something called uh, 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 social, social internship. Uh, social uh, uh, internship. So, uh, 
like that, they spent eight weeks uh, with NGOs, with uh, uh, organizations for the social works. Uh, they work with lots of companies such as CSR, uh, WINS, uh, you know, and, 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 and they spent a lot of learning. Uh, I was uh, meeting a student a few days back who spent his summer uh, in a hill town of Manali, and he educated the local tourists of how not to litter on the street. And uh, he also was part of the team which was working against, uh, uh, which was working for the deforestation uh, campaign which was going on in the uh, in the town. Uh, so these kind of things are students do a lot. Uh, some students are also involved in uh, uh, teaching the local underprivileged kids after the you know, class hours. So uh, and these are only some of the uh, many things that our students are involved in. You have to speak louder, Nivedita. I don't think they can hear you. Yeah, so some of my colleagues will have to leave to go to a orientation uh, pro Sorry thing, about that. preparation. Um, uh, enjoy while you're here and have fun. Best of luck. Thank you so much. So this is all in preparation of the new batch, which is we're already on campus. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to start on Thursday. So we have, so we have to go and uh, train ourselves on some of the orientation activities. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. So your question was, yeah, so the BBA and the BCom are the two programs. The business school runs in the undergraduate level. BCom actually is now being run into yes. by the school at uh, banking and finance. Uh, so these are all three-year programs. So our undergrad in India is a three-year undergrad. This is the British system that we have uh, followed. So the three-year program is what we are doing, and then the MBA is a two-year MBA program. And we have a combined BBA, MBA, integrated BBA, MBA program that is a five years. So that's what, uh, that's the main thing. And then we are, this year we have started a one year program uh, just for fresh, uh, for fresh graduates or for recent graduates who want to join as well, called the Young Global Business Leader Program. It's a certificate program for one year only. And uh, which is a, follows a little bit of a business plus model in the sense that we teach some of the business disciplines, but we also step out and teach a little bit of international affairs, a little bit of uh, government policy, a little bit of uh, uh, other uh, subjects to make it a little bit more wider than the traditional business focused program. That's a one year program. Um, I, am I partial to this side? Next question. <laughs> Sorry, not in Yeah, please. Um, I was wondering about like career finding. Like when you're in your last year, is there like um, career fairs, or is there like a career center where you can go and like have help finding it, or is it like mostly as a student, like listening to like the careers coming here, or like going out and finding? Information? Great question. We have an office of career services. OCS. OCS. Mm -hmm. So they are the people who facilitate the matchmaking between recruiters and students. And uh, this OCS is a centralized function, so they do it for all the schools. So there are specialized people in the OCS for different schools, to take care of those schools and make those connects. Uh, but the, interestingly, the model that OCS has been following is also a bit of a, a uh, shall I say, guided volunteering model. Right. What I mean by that is there's an office, all right, but there's also a team of about 50, uh, 50 people, 50 plus people, whom I think they call them student placement representatives, STRs. Mm -hmm. And these student placement representatives work with the OCS functionaries to get the events going and, and help, help out in the events and also, in fact, uh, mentor their uh, fellow students a bit 
at the interview time and how to prepare resumes and those things. And then OCS does the main planning and brings in resources. For example, if you require specialized help in developing your resume, so we would get, OCS would arrange to get a resume writer to do a session on how to write a resume. But the SPRs, those students would, would also follow up through and make sure that other people show up there or they know the time and if there's a special, if a supplementary session is needed or something, they would help out. So the OCS and the student volunteers together uh, help out in these activities. What's a typical day like for a student? So like for example, for us, we, have, we might have like a class in the morning and then a little bit of a break and then a couple classes in the afternoon and then we might go to like a sports game. Yeah, so great question. I think from uh, what I was looking at in particular because of this orientation thing, we were just mm -hmm. mapping out what are the classes that we have on the first of August when we would have to go in there and we would have to And uh, this year, we are having four sections of the DBA class that is coming in, an expected 220 students in total, so about 50 odd per section. So they have two to three class sessions on their first day, and I think that's typical for, for all days. Uh, and uh, each of those sessions is one and a half hours long. Classes run on campus from 8 o'clock in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. Right? But obviously nobody has to actually be in class on it. <laughs> And uh, but, but and this is remember this is a fully residential campus. Everybody lives on the campus. Right? So they, you must have seen some of the schools housing around here. So everybody lives on campus. And the classes that uh, I'm trying to think of the most ones first, farthest apart. There was a section that had classes from I think 9:40 to 10, uh, 11 p.m. Yeah, in the morning and one at 7.30 to 9. So there are two classes at two ends of the day, and then the rest of the day, they have to do their own, their own stuff, and there will be club activities and other things. They should not show up in the official calendar. But as far as I know of the official calendar, the two classes that they had in the day was one right in the morning and one late in the evening. That's how it just worked out for them. Can I add to that? Yeah, please, please, please. So generally, uh, uh, as uh, we talked about the multidisciplinarity, so generally there's a centralized body is called the uh, academy coordination planning and interdisciplinary. So uh, generally the core courses, like even in the BBA program or the integrated BBA MBA program or MBA program. So we try to finish all the core courses, which like particular program has to take from 8 o'clock till 6 o'clock. And then to, after 6 o'clock, generally we uh, of, uh, we schedule the cross-listed courses. So all law, business, government and public policy, they are finishing all the core courses within that till 6 o'clock. And then the other cross-listed courses are being listed. And that's actually very important. That's why the business school is when can take the law school courses and other courses. So generally we schedule all the electives from 6 to 10 core courses. Generally you do go to the football field, play. If you are not, if you are in the first year, no, no need to take elective. The classes will be done by six o'clock, and then you get involved with the outside activity as well. Um, after the students graduate, do they usually do most part-time jobs in India or in other countries? Great. Yeah, I, from the business school uh, statistics that comes to my mind, I think the division between, uh, between national and out of India jobs is about 80-20. So 80% of the jobs would be in India and about 20%. Would that be a, roughly the right of 75-25, 80-20, something like that? So about 20 to 25% of the placements are international. That they have to, and, the, and the international uh, uh, venues could be like Dubai. Uh, many of our students go to work for various companies a real estate company in Dubai hired quite a few last Mauritius time. Is Mauritius is another one. Singapore. And uh, so mostly in Asia, in, in this Asia, Asia Pacific uh, region. But people have also gone to uh, Western Europe and, uh, and the US. 
So uh, in our MBA program, like or in especially in the integrated program, the second year students uh, go for IMS program in US and in Europe and through Canada as well. So we, I, I mean, we have seen the students have gone to University of Texas at Dallas. You see that gone to Queen Mary. Uh, so when they go and they earn a degree, uh, MS degree, then they start getting a job there. So a lot of students are there in US, especially in the Texas and nearby area, and also. Uh, uh, in London with the Queen Mary and the Belfast University. Similarly, last year, uh, last year, like uh, our students went to UNB to get a double degree. So we have a collaboration with University of New Brunswick. Uh, so where they are doing a first year MBA here, and then they are going there and they are earning the MBA there as well. So they are also placed there in the. So a lot of foreign placement is happening through the MS program. Uh, when uh, MBA second year students or our integrated BBA MBA fifth year, so where they are going for MS in the fifth year. So this way, uh, other than the Singapore and the Mauritius and the Dubai, this is also uh, the interest. We are getting the interest of this. So in Australia, also a couple of universities we are sending: Bond University, Macquarie University, University of New South Wales. This year, Macquarie University. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So every year, I am the Australian Institute of Technology. Yeah. 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 Y
how do you get to know what uh, we expect and what's the environment like, whether you'll be able to adjust yourself because the way you learn things and the way you spend your time in your academic institution, whether it's the same, whether it's different, or even if it's different, would you like to explore that idea of different? If you, uh, you know, think of doing it for a shorter time frame, then possibly you will get to know whether you want to spend a longer time here with us, right? Because at the end of the day, spending a day here will not let you know what kind of a person <laughs> I am inside the classroom, nor about Professor Chakravarti or any other of our faculty members here. But if you spend, say, a 15-day break, and possibly it's a break because the best that you're going to spend in the classroom is not going to be more than 10 hours for the entire duration. At best, how many classes would we want you to take up? Not more than five or six. But even then, you'll get to know what's our style of delivering in the classroom and whether you would actually want to sit in a classroom for a longer period of time if you like that particular faculty member and their style of delivering the particular content or uh, a particular topic, whether it's actually interesting. So all of that, I think for those shorter duration programs, definitely I would encourage you to come here, spend some time and get to know whether it's worth spending time for a longish period in this part of the world. And that's about it. Yeah, yeah. And but we'll have for more, Q &A definitely uh, Mr. Chakravaram is a better person to talk to because he will let you know what different kinds of programs we have, what is the content, what are the cost requirements, because apart from definitely some of the ones which are on scholarship, the rest are paid programs. So how much would you want to pay? And whether you would want to you know, think about how much does it cost you to spend an entire semester at your place? And how much does it cost for you to spend your time here and then still get the same number of credits? So he's the guy that you should talk to.